Hi, and welcome to Cat Fasting. So this is an update. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. I had my surgery on my eyelid uh, September 13th, 2024. As you can see, it is healing. There is some antibacterial gel on there. That's why it's all shiny, uh, but it's, it's not done healing. So interesting in so far as with my fasting and my GLP-1 medication is I seem to have hit a plateau. Now, a variety of factors could be going on here. After my surgery, I found that my hunger actually increased to an interesting degree, almost as if my GLP-1 wasn't doing anything anymore. I was trying to push through it with fasting, it, and it did lead to um, a low weight for me. And then after that, it became incredibly difficult. And one th thing I've noticed with fasting is to be able to tell the difference between a craving and true hunger. And this was definitely a true hunger, especially since my cravings weren't for junk food in any way, it was really for protein. So I did slow down my fasting. I didn't completely get rid of it. I still was doing intermittent fasting every day. I really don't go over eight hour windows ever anymore. But um, as far as going complete um, days with fasting, I did minimize that. So I did uh, go back and look. So since September 17th, which was my lowest weight, I did five full fasts as of yesterday. And that was the week after that, I did two full fasts in a week. The subsequent week I did one fast and then this week I've done one full fast, the Monday of this week, and I'm doing a fast today again, which is Thursday. Um, I have in the last week felt more of my GLP-1 sort of kicking in a bit, but I'm sort of theorizing as to why I haven't dropped any weight. I haven't gained any weight, which is great, so I mean, it could be many things. It could be simply because I do need three full fasts a week in order to drop. This is also an old set point for me. Now it's been over 20 years since I've been this weight, but um, it is a weight that I had been at for a few years and sat at. So it could be a set point that my body remembers and I'm actually going to have to push through and definitely tighten things up a little bit with how many fasts I'm doing, going back to the three fasts a week minimum and making sure that the food I do eat on my eating days are way less ultra processed. Um, up until this point, I haven't really restricted what I've been eating. I've been prioritizing nutrition, especially front loading the beginning of the day, um, trying to make sure I'm having savory meal to break my fast with nothing sweet. I really don't want to be on sort of a high glucose, insulin laden roller coaster for the entire day. Um, but I haven't been totally disciplined in cutting things out. So I need to tighten things up at least for a little bit to uh, push through this particular weight. It's really annoying, but um, I, I wish I could do it. Well, I mean, I guess I could do it one at a time. This week, I'll have to do three full fasts. Um, I may actually try to do a 66 hour fast but we'll see how things play out. Another thing that happens is, you know, for me, I loathe the summer. It's the worst time for my knee. Anything over 18 degrees Celsius is a risk for my knee going out. I don't know why, it just does. My knee hates heat and hates humidity. And um, in the fall, because I've gone several months sort of limiting 
how often I go out and how often I socialize because of this fear of pain with my knee, I get excited and I tend to do a lot more social things in the fall because I, it just feels safer and better for me. And so that's something I've been doing. I have been going out and pushing things a bit. I've started doing, you know, my Pilates routine three times a week. And I just get a bit cheeky when it comes to how I treat my knee. And um, so I do have that mental thing of like wanting to enjoy life. And that includes food a little bit more. So I need to get back into a better routine and limit things and anything that would be considered a treat to um, social events only and never at home on sort of a regular day. So there definitely is that part of it. And also it's been months that I've been on 7.5 milligrams, months. And I'm definitely feeling uh, a lessening effect at that dose. So I do have uh, 10 milligrams available to me and I have one dose left of 7.5 and then it'll be by for that. There's no current shortages in my area, thankfully. So I should be able to move up um, as required. So it, it really could be that, but either way, I do really have to look at my own commitment and my own disciplines and where I expect to be someday in maintenance. Um, so clearly what I am doing now um, has to change. I'm at that point. It'd be nice to think that, you know, at the beginning of any sort of weight loss regime, you know, I can just make a plan and stick to it and just ride it out till the end. That's just not the way it works for me. I absolutely have to make tweaks as I go down and I'm not going to be overly restrictive. I want to make sure there's always room to improve. Um, I'm not doing the bare minimum or at least my goal isn't to do the bare minimum to see results but I also don't want to go to some sort of maximum crazy restrictive regime that I'll end up fighting against this is something that is a journey and I need to make sure that I'm successful and that it's something I can do for life I'm not going to do anything today that I'm not willing to continue forever and I, I really don't know what my plan is beyond making sure that I fast three times a week. I would definitely like to put in some longer fasts. 48 hours is still, it's so hard. I don't know why it's harder than 66. It could just be because on day two, I'm just waiting and counting down the hours until I can have that meal at the 48 hour mark. Whereas 66, you know, I'm not strict on the 66 and it's basically, it's just, it's two days in a row of not eating. So mentally it might be easier. So that's something for me to look at, but definitely to get back in the swing of things, the easiest thing for me to do is to fast the full day on days where I can pick my own bedtime. And just in case you don't know, it's, I can't, my job doesn't allow me to pick my bedtime. So it's only on the days where I don't work the next day that I can pick my, so it's about two to three times a week that I can go to bed early if I want. So Fridays and Saturday nights are nights I can go to bed early. So unfortunately, those are the days that are the easiest to fast for me. Um, other than that, that's the plan. I'm really disappointed. It's really sad to have three weeks with no drop, but I have noticed, you know, my life is a little bit easier at this weight. And I am noticing a little bit of a difference in how people treat me. It's not extreme because I do use, still use a crutch to get around. Um, but I don't know, I, I could be just imagining it, but uh, it's it's been fun. I've, you know, traveled for the day to 
a different city just to sort of walk around felt really great about that and it wasn't difficult or scary for me and um you know i'm looking forward to seeing what else sort of pops up as i drop lower but i really do just want to drop just a little bit just keep it going even if it's small amounts you know it does really make me appreciate even a half a pound loss is so much better than just staying at the same weight but you know maybe my body you know just wants to hang out here for a little while as well but i am going to push it starting this week and see if 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 i do three weeks of fasting and i limit my uh ultra processed foods and i don't drop especially going up to 10 milligrams that's something I'm gonna have a conversation with my doctor about. And I really will need to take a good, good look at making some bigger changes. Uh, so I'll keep everyone who's interested updated. I really appreciate anyone who's watched this. Um, thank you for coming along on my journey. Have a good day.